Hey everybody, we're back for another episode of the breakdown here on the Loudmouth MMA Podcast Network. I'm your co-host Max Friedman, joined as always by my man all the way in Holland, the Netherlands, whatever you call it, MMA DNA's Big Marcel, Marcel Dorf. Big Marcel, that hair is getting long. I like that hat, by the way. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it. My my hair is getting long. Yeah, yeah look, can... you got the little wave tails going on in the back. Yeah, man, I have to go to the barber soon, man. I don't like it at all. But <laughs> you go to one of those old school barber shops where you sit at the uh, sitting there and you guys talk shop in, in the in the in the barber shop. No, man, it's actually a Chinese barber. It's all it's very cheap, so uh, <laughs> it's all good, man. I have easier haircuts, so uh, nah, it's it's all good, man. But uh, yeah. Big, big Marcel, big day in the world of MMA. I know we want to get into UFC Philadelphia here shortly, but um, any big thoughts, feedback, opinions regarding some of the big headliners from this week? And and let's go ahead and keep Conor McGregor out of it, but how about the championship fights and fight bookings that are going on? Hey, man, I mean, uh, Joe's against Thiago Santos is a fun fight, I think. Uh, Nunez against home, not a fight I'm really looking forward to, but hey, what can you say, right? To uh, former champion against double champ, uh, Henry Cejudo against the, against Marlon Moraes. Did Cejudo deserve the title shot? I think he did, but I think other people should have gotten the f- first shot at the at the Moraes or shot at Moraes should fight Moraes. Um, but f- very fun matchups, and uh, let's don't forget the the barn burner in Canada, man. Cup Swanson against Shane Burgos. What a fight. Uh, amazing. Yeah, rumors so, are swirling that the Toronto Sun stole the scoop from MMA DNA on that one. Yeah, kind of, man. But hey, what can you do? What can you do, right? You know, it's all <laughs> good. Though. It's all good. Got some other scoops. There's internet around rumors that, I, that I'm hearing around the mill. Okay. Um, yeah, you, you have some good, uh, good ears, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, let's go ahead and get, get into it. UFC on ESPN2. UFC... <laughs> Philadelphia comes your way this Saturday, March 30th, 2019, uh, from the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The early prelims are on ESPN+. Plus. There are televised prelims on ESPN here in the States, as well as the main card on ESPN um, as well. We are the breakdown on the Loudmouth MMA Podcast Network. We can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, SoundCloud, wherever you get your uh, podcast fix. Be sure to check out some of the other shows on the network, Not Safe for Work MMA Show, MMA Yesterday, um, Interviews, Fight Companions, and Around the Cage featuring our great friend Davidson Baker. Really fun show that mimics the ESPN around the horn. Let's take a look at the standings. The UFC Nashville last week, Big Marcel, both we both had a mediocre 6-6 six and six week. You did pick the fight of the night correctly with uh, Bryce Mitchell and Bobby Moffitt, um, so that runs your total to eight bonuses on the year. You doubled me. I still only have four. Um, you have four underdogs you've picked correctly. I have three. Um, but we are tied in the overall standing 65 and 47. Not bad. You know, not bad. Crazy that we have exactly the same. <laughs> the standing is exactly the same. Yeah. yeah. And this awesome. this card was hard to pick. So so I, I'd imagine we'll have some different ones on this one. Um, Big Marcel, any final thoughts or... Uh, feedback on on ufc nashville before we dive into ufc philly nah man it was it was it was an okay card i didn't think it was very spectacular at all but uh, it was okay man i mean uh you can't expect from every card to be uh to be crazy spectacular and it, it was a solid card there were some good performances on that i think we have to uh we have to take out the random marcus armbar as angela hill which you called that marcus was going to win which was uh yeah, which was a great moment, I think, and also I think uh, Curtis Blades showed uh, another level of uh, of wrestling over there against Justin Willis, and uh, yeah, the post fight interview was something else, I think. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and let's absolutely don't forget the crazy Superman hook, Superman punch from Anthony Pettis against uh, Stephen Thompson. I think many people ro- wrote him off, and I did as well in this fight. So uh, he proved me wrong, he proved you wrong. So uh, yeah. Yeah, awesome how about Macy Barber, too, facing adversity yeah. early, coming back with a vengeance in round two, getting the win. Um, yeah, like you said, I, I echo what you're saying. Uh, not not the most exciting card, but that, that tends to happen, and, and we're true fans of the sport, and we're going to watch it no matter what. 
100 percent all right ufc philadelphia time and we kick things off at 135 pounds two former flyweights taking it taking on one another the number seven ranked flyweight <laughs> alex perez is a sizable minus 280 favorite against mark the bumblebee de la rosa plus 240 on the comeback there tons of experience between these two um De La Rosa, the, the second husband and wife combo to compete in the UFC, uh, riding a lot of momentum right now between the two of them. Um, Perez, meanwhile, Timo Yama guy uh, was on an absolute roll, but then got really ran through by Joseph Benavidez, for lack of a better term. Now three and one in the UFC, um, looking for a bounce back performance. What happens in this one, Big Marcel? Yeah, man, this is a good fight. I think... Uh... <clears throat> I would have liked to see it at 125 personally, but okay, 135 is good as well. Uh, Alex Perez, very good in the UFC so far, only that uh, that short notice loss against Benavides, but uh, hey, Benavides is top three for years, so that can happen. I think a very impressive uh, win against uh, Shorty Torres in the, in the first round in uh, 2018 last year. And uh, if you looked at Mark De La Rosa, who had a difficult uh, debut against Tim Elliott was also a short notice, but he got two wins after that, man. Um, I, I think it will be a close fight, but uh, I have to go with Alex Perez in this one. I think uh, Alex Perez has the has the style to match up good with uh, Bumblebee, and uh, I see Alex Perez winning this one, probably not by finish, by, but by doing more, having more output, and uh, going with a unanimous decision win for uh, Alex Perez. Yeah, I like Perez in this one, too. Uh, I think he locks up that that nasty Darce choker guillotine combo that he's got. Uh, I'll take him in the second round there. All right. Well, then we go to 125 pounds for the women. We got Marina Moroz taking on Sabina Mazos. Mazo, the Colombian queen, 6-0, and making her UFC debut. She's only 22 years old, and she is the reigning LFA flyweight champion. Uh, four decision wins in her career, two wins via head kick. So maybe something to watch there. Moroz, 8-3 and three overall, 3-3 three and three in the UFC, has lost back-to-back -back fights. She heads up to 125 pounds for this one. I mean, she's still game in there, but we're not really sure we're going to see anything more out of Marina Moroz than we've already seen. Big Marcel, what's your take here? Yeah, Marina Moroz, she had the, and one of the best debuts in the UFC I, uh, you ever saw, like against Joanne Calderwood with an armbar win. And uh, I think it was in Krakow. Uh, was a short notice fight for her as well, but after that she 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 got two wins after that. But uh, she also got some some losses, and she looked really bad in in, in, in many of those fights, in my opinion. Um, Sabina Maso, uh, she got the hype, she got the skill, she has the win streak. She looked looked good in the LFA fights when I saw of her, and she's still very young. And uh, I think she will have a tough uh, a tough fight with uh, Marina Moros here because Marina Moros can be described as kind of a veteran already now, I think. But uh, I'm going with Sabina Maso here, probably by a very close split or unanimous decision. But uh, I see the Colombian Queen winning this one. Yeah, I'm going to take the Colombian Queen too, but wouldn't be surprised if Moreau steals it. She's been doing a lot of work here in Chicago uh, with Mike Valle, Valle flow striking and, and getting a lot of rounds in with Juliana Pena. So, uh, Keep an eye on. Prior to even being signed, Big Marcel, you called that out on Twitter. Unbelievable uh, there from the from the UFC rankings panel. Um, but talk about some foreshadowing, Big Marcel. You were the one that pointed out Casey Kenny was in the UFC rankings when he was currently fighting for LFA. <laughs> then he gets the win and gets the spot in the UFC. Uh, what's going on in this fight? Um, yeah, man. I mean, Ray Bork uh, has been uh, one of the best in this in this weight class flyweight for year, for years, I think. Um, now at bantamweight, Casey Kenny with that uh, sick knee knockout last Friday in that LFA card. Uh, the interim interim champ champ from uh, LFA coming over. Um, 
Yeah, it, it depends really how Borg shows up, I think. It's so long uh, when we saw him in the Octagon for the last time. Uh, he got some really uh, some really uh, personal issues as well with the, with his uh, kid who has uh, it goes through really tough times. And I, w I wish him all the best to him and his family, by the way. Um, if Ray Borg shows up to Ray Borg, we know, I think he will win this fight. If Ray Borg shows up, not the Ray Borg, we know Casey Kenny can take him. And uh, man, this is a, a coin flip with, with that said. So I, I have thought about this. I was first leaning to Kenny, but I have to go with Borg, man. Unanimous decision. I think he just wins this fight. Ray yeah. Borg. Yeah, you mentioned the, the the issues outside the cage. I mean, he's been out of action since the, this championship loss to Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. Four canceled fights since then, and this is actually his third opponent for this bout. So, um, agreed uh, on on all fronts. Uh, the hungry if the Ray, hungry Ray Borg comes out, he can very much win this fight. I'm going to take him as well by a unanimous decision. Get back on track. All right, we move along to the middleweight division. Kevin Holland taking on Gerald Mershart. Holland, a minus 210 favorite. He is 1-1 one one in the UFC. Primarily a striker, but interesting enough, he did win a grappling match earlier this month at a fight-to-win event. Um, Mershart, meanwhile, a very accomplished grappler in his own right. He is a plus-175 underdog coming out of Rufus Sport. Uh, still only 31 years of age, but 39 professional fights for the real GM3. Uh, he is coming off a loss to Jack Hermanson in December, but had won two finishes prior to that fight in December. Four finishes in his UFC career. Uh, Holland, meanwhile, coming off the win over John Phillips. Quite a Seems like this line's a little off to me, Big Marcel. What are your thoughts here? This is a horrible fight to pick, in my opinion. Uh, I mean, you got Kevin Holland, the guy with the hype, the guy with the, with the brashy and talking all, all the crap he can. And I think he still is a cool guy, man. I, mean, I really like him. Gerald Mershart, uh, coming off that, uh, for me, surprising loss against Jack Herm Hermanson. I didn't saw that coming, honestly. Um, Man, the, the, Kevin Holland fought, fight for us for us uh, for his home crowd, I think, because he really was uh, gunning to be on this card. Um, oh, you you want you want me to choose, right? Um, I'll, I'll take my my pick first, so you don't have to do it. I'm going to take Gerald Mershart with a third round TKO. I think Holland tends to fade in these fights, and and Mershart a slow starter, but he has come on strong in in some of his UFC fights and in, in later rounds. Okay, yeah, I, I, I sound like a, a total uh, bitch right now, but I'm going with uh, Gerald Marshall by submission in the third round. So, hey, that's uh, just good analysis right there, Big Marshall. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got almost a coin flip uh, with our next bout. Enrique Barzola Fuerte, <laughs> the minus 115 line against Kevin Aguilar, the angel of death, minus 105 in this close featherweight bout here. Aguilar, 16 and 1. Eight straight, man, he comes, he stands in front of you, and he comes ready to bang on a really incredible run right now in his career. Meanwhile, Barzola, the ultimate fighter, Latino America season two winner, in my opinion, should be 6-0 and in the UFC. He is 5-1, and one, um, four straight wins under his belt, and he seems to really be mixing things up well now. Um, training an American top team full-time, really putting Peru on the map. Uh, strong wrestler. Seems to be growing on the feet. I really like the way his game is rounding out. Um, I'm going to pick Barzola to grind out a decision here. But Big Marcel, give us the rundown on, on this fight. Exactly the same, man. I agree with everything you said. I also think Barzola is still undefeated in the UFC. No disrespect to Carl Bocciniak, by the way. But, uh, yeah, man. I mean, Aguilar looked very good in his UFC debut against Rick Glenn. But Barzola, man, you can't pick against the guy. The guy is so strong on the ground. His wrestling is second to none. And uh, Barzola, by unanimous decision, by being uh, very strong, being uh, controlling Aguilar on the ground and uh, using his wrestling all the time. Got to go with Barzola. Yeah, got to avoid that big right hand, though, that put out uh, Damon Jackson and Tom Lee on, on the LFA scene. But I agree, I agree. Barzola, man, love, love the way he's been competing right now. All right, moving along to the lightweight division, Ross Pearson taking on Des Green, and Des Green is a 
a big minus 440 favorite Pearson, a plus 350 underdog. Man, I'm a fan of both these guys. They're 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 just laborers in there, you know. They you know, blue collar type of fighters, in my opinion. Um, Pearson not going to be the top 15 guy he once was, and he is one one in five in his last six. A lone win over Mizuto Hirota in that stretch, um, but was only finished in one of those fights. The the flying knee to Dan Hooker. Uh, Des Green, meanwhile, two and three in the UFC. Although he's gotten some real tough draws. I mean, Merbek Tysimov, Rustam Kabilov, Michelle Prezeris. They're, they're throwing him against the, the Wolves, man. I mean, th those are some tough, tough fights. But seems to be a, a little bit better at this stage of his career. Big Marcel, what's going on here? Man, I mean, no disrespect to Mizito Hirota, but for I think I, almost everybody defeated him in the UFC. And uh, that that's alone. Not Cole no, Miller. Not Cole Miller, but Cole Miller was gone after that as well. But, uh, I mean, that's green. You can argue argue he uh, he controversially lost that fight against Kabilov in Rotterdam, I think. So uh, he got pretty unlucky with Michel Prezeres coming over way too uh, way too heavy, and uh, the Tyson fight was also a lot closer than many people thought. So I think Des Green's record doesn't do him right in the UFC, and uh, I see him winning this one, man, probably by a unanimous decision or maybe even finishing Ross Pearson by a TKO in the third round. Des Green. Yeah, Des Green, unanimous decision on that one. No, nothing further to add there. All right. We go down to 115 pounds. Jessica Aguilar taking on Marina Rodriguez. Rodriguez, a minus 300 favorite against Aguilar, plus 250 underdog. Brazil versus Mexico here. Big Marcel, how you see this one going? Yeah, man, Jessica Aguilar, for years, she was one of the best in the, in, in the division. But uh, I think she, her, her problem is she wasn't a prime when she was not in the UFC. And after she came in the UFC, she only defeated Jody Esquivel. And, uh, and like for a fight, she got one win. Many canceled fighters canceled fight as well. Not taking Marina Rodriguez on short notice. Rodriguez coming off that uh, uh, Dana White Contender Series Brazil edition where she defeated Maria Oliveira. Um, a draw against Ronda Marcos uh, last year. Um, Alexa Grosso was actually fighting uh, Marina Rodriguez, but uh, Jessica Aguilar stepped in on like a week notice or something. Um, and man, I have to side with Marina Rodriguez here. I think uh, she she has more of a future in the sport than Jessica Aguilar has. I think her future is more uh, it's more in the past. I think uh, she, I don't see her making a run in the top fifteen anymore. Rodriguez probably will. So uh, taking Marina Rodriguez, Rodriguez here probably by a TKO in the second round. That's uh, yeah, you, you hit the nail on the head with that one. I, I see it going the same way. TKO in the second round for for Rodriguez. I think Rodriguez has a really high ceiling in this sport. Um, you know, you get random Marcos in your UFC debut and take her to a draw. That's that's something that, that a lot to be said for that. Yeah, it's a draw on your record, but man, um, she looked incredible on on Dana White's Tuesday night contender series against a very game Maria Oliveira. So I'll take the Brazilian as well um, on that one. We go to the featherweight division in our next fight. Shaman Moore Rice taking on Sadiq Youssef. Youssef is a minus 150 favorite. The comeback on Shaman Moore Rice is plus 130. And Moore Rice, winner of back to back fights in the UFC over Julio Arce and Matt Sales. Uh, both very close fights, though, but he seems to be growing and finding his own footing inside the UFC now that he's had a few fights. Uh, meanwhile, Youssef. Three fight win streak with really strong performance in the Dana White Tuesday Night Contender Series, as well as UFC debut. Team Lloyd Irvin guy, great with great stand up. Um, Marais likes to bang too. Big Mar Big Marcel, what's going on in the featherweight division in this one? Man, this is a fun fight, man. I'm really looking forward to it. I think uh, both guys are willing to strike and uh, punch with each other. Uh, Sudik Yusuf is, is for years one of my favorite prospects in, uh, in MMA and all over MMA. Um, I was super stoked he got that contract after Dana White's Contender Series. Uh, very impressive when he got Suman Mokhtarian in his USC debut. Uh, Shaman Morais had probably the toughest debut of all time against Sabit Magomed Sharipov in the UFC. But that had two solid wins against Matt Sales and Julio Arce, which was a pretty close decision. Um, man, I, I don't pick often against Sodik Yusuf, and I don't feel to do that this time. So I'll go with Sodik Yusuf by a unanimous, uh, let's go a little bit crazy by TKO in the third round. Sodik Yusuf. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm, 
I've, I've gone back and forth on this fight too. Uh, Shaman Marais, I, I like the way he's he's comfortable in there, but I, I think Sadiq Youssef is just far too technical and, and too powerful for him. Um, on the feet, I, I just see Youssef landing something before uh, Marais is able to implement his game. I will take Youssef as well, TKO. Uh, I'll give him the first round. TK, get him out of there. Policy. Yeah, 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 yeah. What? Hey, got gotta gotta put it out there. Um, we got a matchup at at two hundred and five pounds here. The latest Fortis MMA import finds his way to the UFC. That's Kennedy Inzichukwu. He is a minus two twenty five favorite in his UFC debut against Paul the Bear Jew Craig. Comeback on Craig is plus one eighty five. Inzichukwu six and zero, twice a winner on Dana White's Tuesday Night Contender Series. He's 6'5". He has an 83-inch reach, three straight finishes, and this seems to be a favorable matchup for him. What do you think, Big Marcel? Yeah, man. I mean, if you look at the Paul Craig's uh, last fights, he's 1-3 with the only win against Anka Live in the final seconds, and the fight he got totally dominated. Um, Kennedy and uh, he looked good in his last performance in Dana White Contender Series. I think the first one, he also fought in 2017. I didn't, was too impressed by that. But uh, you see, he, he's making a... He's making progress in his career. He's still young, uh, and uh, how how can you pick up for this MMA right now, right? Right. So, uh, yeah, I think also there's a favorable matchup for him, and I think uh, he's taking out Paul Craig in the first round, man. Yeah, the uh, you, how can you pick against Fortis MMA? They're putting it all together, and think of the the killers that he has in that training room with you know Alonzo Menafield and and Ryan Spann and Rashad Coulter. I mean, uh, Mohammed Usman, some some really good names to train with there. Kennedy Inzichuku gets it done. Um, TKO, yeah, second round as well on on that one. Man, a lot of similarities here, Big Marcel. I was oh. thinking we would have some some differences, <laughs> but hey, hey, we still got some fights left. Um, next up, we got a couple of ranked strawweights here. The number six ranked strawweight Carolina Kovalkiewicz taking on the number nine ranked Michelle Waterson, the karate hottie. Kovalkiewicz, minus 150. The comeback on the karate hottie, plus 130. Karate Hadi quietly is winner of back-to-back -back fights here. Well-rounded and always busy in there, always pushing the pace. Um, meanwhile, we know K Kovalkiewicz loves to mix things up on the feet as well, coming off that really tough loss to Jessica Andrade, but had won two very close fights prior to that. Um, could be an all-out fight on the feet here. Big Marcel, I don't know which way I'm going on this one. What about you? Yeah, I pretty made my mind up about it. Um... Karolina Kovalkiewicz, uh, I'm going to be a dick right here. I think she absolutely unanimous decision uh, for Lisa Herrick, right? not to use split decision. I didn't, really didn't saw that. Uh, Jessica Andrade, yeah, she, she got knocked out. She, she had her chin too much in the air, I think, and uh, she got caught. Uh, Michelle Watterson, uh, one, two, two back to back fights, but the Courtney Casey one was split decision, and I think Courtney Casey should have gotten that one. Um, I think Wallace is more a complete fighter than Kar Karolina Kowalkiewicz. I think Kowalkiewicz just really focused on the stand-up fight. And I think if Wallace can get the fight to the ground, she can pretty much do what she wants with Kowalkiewicz on the ground. So I'm going with uh, with Wallace here by being too busy on the ground for a unanimous decision. Everybody thinks it will be a stand-up battle, but I think uh, Michelle will take it to the ground. If not, Carolina will win, but I think she takes it to the ground and she will defeat Kowalkiewicz by split or unanimous decision. Man, this was one of those where I, I've gone back and forth, but I, I got to trust you with my first instinct, and that was Kowalkiewicz via split decision in a stand-up fight. Um, but I, I think you make some very compelling arguments and I could very much see Watterson staying busy and even giving it, getting it to the ground. Um, but I will take Carolina Kovalkiewicz here, um, with a split cough. Max, I always make compelling arguments. Man. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> All right. We move things along to the featherweight division. The number 10 ranked Josh Emmett takes on Michael, the menace Johnson, Johnson minus 115. Emmett slight, slight, slight underdog, even though it's uh, 
bit plus money here, or not even plus money, minus 105. Johnson, 2 and 0 oh, since dropping to, or 2 and 1, excuse me, since dropping to 145. But both close decisions for his wins um, relies heavily on his speed. But to me, that pistol of a left hand doesn't seem to have translated well to 145 pounds just yet. Emmett coming off the layoff, dealing with concussion injuries. 13 and 2 overall, 4 and 2 in the UFC. Close fight on paper here. Big Marcel, which way you leaning? Yeah, Josh Emmett all the way, honestly, man. I think uh, Michael Johnson is 2 and 0 in his last fights, but uh, I didn't see him winning against Feely, to be honest. And uh, low buff, yeah, what can we say about that? Uh, Josh Emmett, um, he, he got knocked out by Jeremy Stevens, simple as that. But uh, before that, he looked very good. Um, he did very well. He knocked out Lamas, who not many people expected it, including me. I also didn't expect that. Uh, I'm cool with Josh Emmett here. He, he, he's coming back from a long, a long time injury. Uh, he had some, uh, I think, uh, he had some face reconstruction as well after his Jeremy Stevens fight. But um, yeah, going with Josh Emmett here by uh, uh, not by a finish. I think by unanimous decision. Yeah, I I like the actually the layoff when you know I've, I've listened to some interviews with Josh Emmett taking the time off to deal with a concussion, you know things that he he mentioned Chris Holdsworth, uh, his jujitsu coach, you know some something that he wish he would have done, you know seeing that firsthand. So now he's um, you know really I guess trying to trying to really savor his career and and I like the move there. He moves well in and out and and I expect him to get that redemption for his teammate Andre Feely. Emmett unanimous decision. It's very rare I pick against a, a fellow St. Louis native like Michael the Menace Johnson, but I just don't think this is a good matchup for him at all. All right, we go to the co-main event of the evening. Three rounds in the UFC's middleweight division. The number 11 ranked David Branch taking on Jack the Joker Hermanson. Hermanson Swedish, right? He's from Sweden? Sweden and Nor Nor Norwegian. Both. And Norwegian. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, Two-headed monster there. Uh, <laughs> Jack Hermanson is a minus 130 favorite. Kind of surprised to see that line um, from Vegas. David Branch, a slight plus 110 underdog. Big Marcel, in a middleweight clash, close fight on paper. How do you see this one playing out? Funny thing is, this is a cool main event, and it's one of the fights I really don't care about, to be honest. Uh, David Branch, um, yeah, he, he didn't look good in his last fight against Jared Cannonier, I think, but uh, he knocked out Tiago Santos, who's fighting for the title later this year. Um, was a middleweight right now, and Tiago Santos, not light heavyweight, of course, now. Um, since his comeback to the UFC, going two and two against uh, wins against Jotko and Santos, pretty decent, but uh, he got finished two times as well. Jack Hermanson, um, yeah, great win against Gerald Murshaw. I didn't expect him to finish him by submission. Uh, the Talos latest fight where he got, where he got, uh, he was behind on the scorecards, but uh, he. He, he was even injured, and he he got Dallas Ladies, which was very impressive. Uh, he got he got also he got the loss against Thiago Santos, by the way. Yeah, um, very hard fight to pick. Going with David Branch, pure on being more in, in bigger fights, uh, having having that experience, that uh, that pressure of co-main and main events. Um, David Branch probably by getting a knock getting a knockout in the first round. I think uh, Branch will impress this time again. Yeah. You know, when I think of David Branch, I think about the the sport as a whole. And, you know, there's there's really different levels to it. And, and while Branch was one of the best outside the UFC, I mean, he steps in the cage and he quit. He steps in the UFC, quickly finds out it's a whole new level inside that UFC octagon. I mean, he's only two and two in his UFC return. One of those losses being against an unranked guy at the time. Um, yeah. Jack Hermanson, meanwhile, might be on the best run of his career. He's four and one in his last five, all finishes. Um, but you, you know, you mentioned the the TKO loss to Tiago Santos. I could see Hermanson catching Branch on the feet, but I could also see a decision looming. Um, gone back and forth on this one too, but I'm going to take Hermanson by a split call here. Um, but man. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Branch lands one of those clean right hands to the to the chin and puts him out too. Main event time. And man, talk about a violent lightweight matchup we have on tap here in the main event of UFC Philadelphia. 
Edson Barboza currently sitting at number six in the UFC rankings, a slight minus 135 favorite in this one. He takes on the number seven ranked Justin, the highlight Gaethje, plus 115 on the betting line there. Barboza coming in off a win, that destruction over Dan Hooker, but pretty much after two maulings to Khabib Nurmagomedov and, and Kevin Lee. Gaethje, similar story, had two losses where he was finished in absolute wars. I mean, and then he sent James Vick into oblivion, man. That was one heck of a right hand. Um, both throw really good leg kicks. Uh, Barboza is known for throwing leg kicks, but Gaethje, we saw in the Dustin Poirier fight, we've seen it at the World Series of Fighting. Uh, he has really good leg kicks too. Man, I this is a tough one to call too. And something's telling me Barboza is going to catch him with a head kick, but I, 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 I just, I don't know. Big Marcel, where are you at with this one? Yeah, man, I'm really not looking forward to the fights at no whatever. <laughs> uh, amazing fight. You got to uh, pause a little bit more for dramatic effect. Gotta yeah, say, but, I'm really not looking forward to this fight. Said no one ever. Yeah, okay. I, I will keep that in mind next time. <laughs> um, yeah, Barboza came back. Very good after his two losses uh, against Dan Hooker last time out. Uh, Justin Gaethje same against James Vick. But uh, if, if there's gonna be an, if there's gonna be a brawl, I, I favor Gaethje. But I think Barboza keeps it technical and uh, keeps the distance. I will probably, like you said, will land a kick, maybe even low kicks, but probably a head kick. And we'll knock him out in the second or third round. I think Barbosa gets this. I have the feeling if Gaethje fights against the real elite guys like the top five uh, in the division, he has some real troubles. Uh, trouble in the way he fights. He fights very open. He doesn't care to get hit. But there is a certain level you can't do that, I think. And uh, Barbosa is still in that category of that level. And uh, I favor Barbosa at this point. Yep. Barboza third round head kick is where I'm I'm seeing right now, um, but man, talk about the true main event and the people's main event: Edson Barboza versus Justin Gaethje. That leads us into our picks for the evening. <coughs> Big Marcel, is there any other fight on this card besides Barboza and Gaethje that's going to get fight of the night? Shamu Arise against Sudi Yusuf. It's the only one who would can compete. I think with this one. And is that your pick? Let's be honest. We're both taking the main event here. Yeah. Actually, we have to, I guess. Yeah. All right. All right. How about performance of the night bonuses? Big Marcel, who do you see taking home that 50 Gs? But both are getting a double one. And we're going with, let me think, let me think, let me think. Uh, yeah, if it's knockout, David Branch. I have to go with that. Man, this is uh, this is tough. I'm going to go uh, Kennedy in the Chukwu in his UFC debut. And, uh, man, um, tough call here. I'll, t I'll take Sadiq Youssef. I, I really like that matchup uh, for him against Shaman Marais. Underdog time. And I'll go first on this one. The real GM3, Gerald Merchardt, is my underdog of the evening, partially because he is the only non-favorite that I picked. So he <laughs> he will be getting my underdog pick. Big Marcel, you have Merchardt, Michelle Watterson, or David Branch to pick from. Yeah, same as you. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> Who? What'd you say? The same as you. I'm oh, sorry, dude. <laughs> I thought you said Sadiq Yusuf for a second. I was like, I said he's not an underdog. <laughs> All right. And then we need our lock. Who is your competent evening pick, Big Marcel? That's going to get it done. My confident evening pick. Uh, ooh, that's, that's, uh, ah, let's go with, uh, with Marita Rodriguez. Reiner Rodriguez. Man, I, I was torn here. I, I like uh, Josh Emmett. I like Alex Perez, but I'm going to go Des Green for my lock of the night. All right, let's let's run down this real quick. Starting from the bottom to the top, we both have Alex Perez beating Mark De La Rosa. Uh, he's not even Brazilian. Why am I saying <laughs> that? Mark De La Rosa. <laughs> Sabina Mazo, Colombian queen, getting it done in her debut over Marina Moroz. 
We both have Ray Borg getting back in the win column over the debuting Casey Kenny. We're both taking the underdog pick with Gerald Merchardt over Kevin Holland, both taking Enrique Fuerte Barzola to keep that momentum rolling against uh, Kevin Aguilar, both taking Des Green over Ross Pearson, as well as Marina Rodriguez over Jessica Aguilar, both taking Super City Yusuf to get it done over Shaman Marais. Both have Kennedy in Zachukwu via TKO in the second round over Paul Craig. We're split on the next one. Uh, Carolina Kovalkiewicz for me or a split decision. You've got Michelle Watterson, uh, the karate hottie via a unanimous decision on that side of things. Next pick, we have Josh Emmett taking over against um, Michael Johnson at Featherweight. We both take him. We are split on the co-main event. I am taking Jack Hermanson. You are taking David Branch. And then in the main event, we are both taking Edson Barbosa to get it done. Big Marcel's got Edson Barbosa. Fight of the night, performance tonight, walking away with 100 Gs. Yes. Well, that's going to do it for UFC Philadelphia. Want to remind everyone we are the breakdown on the Loudmouth MMA podcast network that can be found across all podcast mediums, YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, SoundCloud, whatever you want to get your your podcast fix. And just be sure to check out all the other great shows on the network. Big Marcel, any final thoughts, feedback about anything that's on your mind? Could be UFC Philadelphia. Could be these UFC championship matchup uh, announcements. Could be anything else. What's up in the in the that that head of yours over in uh, the other side of the world? <laughs> Nothing much, man. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's uh, let's say I enjoy the fights, guys. Um, yeah, what, what can I say? Oh yeah, I uh, tweeted out uh, that you can get a code for ACA ninety four if you retweet my tweet. Just only retweet. That's all. And uh, you're in for the draw, and maybe you win a code. So hey, it's free. You can try. Uh, Who doesn't want to see that low today? Say uh, ACA card people jump on this retweet big Marcel 24 and get that, get that ACA code. You you don't know, maybe you're the one lucky winner. Then you could, if you don't even want it. You can sell it on the street. Who knows? <laughs> All right. Well, before we get out of here, big Marcel, let the people know where they can find and follow your content. MMA DNA dot NL. Man, that's uh, a great hat. I, I may have to order one of those for myself. <laughs> thanks man i appreciate it uh yeah big marcel 24 on twitter and instagram uh facebook mma dna uh, also twitter and instagram mma dna.nl website and uh yeah thanks again for uh for having me and uh yeah trademark mma follow him you know one of the best and the best in the business man love the guy and uh yeah what can i say love my mma for the win thanks guys yeah, you can find me at Trademark MMA on Twitter. My content is at Cage Side Press and the Body Lock. Um, not as much time to write these days, but Big Marcel, I will always find time to break down fights with you, my man. This is one of my highlights of my week every week. It's an absolute pleasure. Awesome. Same for me, man. Likewise. Big shout out to our um, Loudmouth MMA podcast network uh, owners, Keith Schillen, Kyle Steele. Without them, none of this would be possible. Um, be sure to check out the other shows on the network. We, we very much support. And uh, thanks, everyone. Have a good week and enjoy UFC Philadelphia.